We're talking about maps, 1D maps. This is chapter 10 of Strogatz. So 1D maps are a category of maps. So maps are different from differential equations. So we're going to leave differential equations for a while. There is a relationship though. So maps are generally, if we think of, it takes a point and I'm thinking in for right now, Rn, and it assigns that to a new point, which we would call f of x, which is also an Rn. So we'd say this is a map of Rn to itself. And we'll typically be looking at situations where if you have a point, it has a unique inverse. So we could write f inverse of x, and that's another point. It's often written this way, where we would say xn plus 1 equals f of xn. So it takes in a point, say x0, as an initial condition and says, well, where does that go to? So if we have x1, it goes to x2, that's f of x1, and maybe that maps to x3, that's f of x2, and so it's f of f of x1, etc. We can define the orbit of an initial condition, x0. An initial condition, and then all of its future, we say iterates under the map, and as shorthand, we would write, say, this f of, um, this would be f2 of x1. So we'd write f2, x0, f3, x0. So it's a collection of discrete points. So sometimes these are called discrete maps or just maps or iterated maps. The orbit includes not just the point and going forward, but because of the inverse, we could look at the points that came from there and which mapping forward would take us to that point. So it's an infinite sequence of points in Rn. That would be the orbit of an initial condition under the map. I'm speaking generally of in, in n dimensions in Rn. We will specialize to one dimensional maps and a particular one dimensional map, the logistic map that has a lot of interesting behavior as you vary a bifurcation parameter. You might be wondering, well, what are the connections with the real world? Why look at maps? If you think of dynamical systems and nonlinear dynamics is just another term for the mathematical subject of dynamical systems, the two main categories are continuous dynamical systems described by differential equations, which we've talked about a lot. The other category are these discrete time dynamical systems or maps. And there are connections with the real world. One of them is these are tools for evaluating differential equations. So differential equations, the way that we've written them, I guess I'll write here x dot equals capital F of x. This is a continuous time, but really what happens with things like computationally, when you do simulations with say MATLAB, Mathematica, or any type of simulation tool, it's creating a map from this ODE. So you actually are simulating a map approximation that tells you if you start with this initial condition and there's the vector field, where will you go after some short amount of time, maybe a long amount of time later, you'd be here at X1. So X1 would be the flowing under the ODE for a small time step delta T. And that's obtained from something like a Runga Kutta algorithm. If you've used ODE 45, Dr. Roth, yeah. is this then essentially a difference equation, like the just the um, discrete version of a differential kind of thing? In this particular case, as a tool to simulate, yes, but there are maps that don't come from differential equations. Okay. So that's why it, it's actually the more general category of a dynamical system. You could always write a differential equation in terms of a map. In fact, that's how we simulate them. But there are maps that do not come from differential equations. So yeah, if I did a Venn diagram, there'd be the space of all maps. And then there'd be, you know, maps from ODEs or even maps from PDEs, maps from DEs, differential equations. But the category of maps is, is larger than that. So maps are the more general dynamical system. The study of differential equations started first. So the study of maps 
is relatively new, you know, in terms of <laughs> centuries. The logistic equation was published around the time I was born, and it's you know, been a big deal. So it's not it's it's not that old. It's forty something. So yeah, they are the more general. This is one connection. So you could think of you know any if if you're studying a map or the category of maps generally. Well, some subset of that is coming from differential equations, so it makes sense. Strogatz's book talks about how to simulate differential equations. We didn't really talk about it, but it's all writing it as a discrete map. So you might look more into that if you're interested. As another tool for understanding differential equations, and I'm thinking here, we haven't uh, said really anything about this, but if you've got a system in three dimensions, let's say, and you're studying trajectories, you could take a slice of the space and look at how initial conditions start on that slice. Sometimes the slice is called sigma and the trajectories will you know, go around and hit this surface again in some other point and maybe they'll go around and hit it again. If you look at what the dynamics are on that surface, it's a discrete map. Like this initial condition goes to this one, goes to this one. This is called a Poincaré. There's that name again. He was the first to use this idea. A Poincaré map on a Poincaré. He called it a surface section. Think of it like if we were to look at a bunch of trajectories of stuff in a river or the ocean, it's moving in three dimensions. What if we set up a net to catch things going through this? Sort of like we've got, we put a net in this fluid and then we're looking at how things come back, but just exactly where they pierce this surface, pierce our net. So a Poincaré map would be of this sort. So you would have Xn plus one equals, and sometimes it's written as P, Xn, that's a map. But it comes from taking a slice of what's happening to trajectories in a three or more dimensional flow. There's also some phenomena that are just more naturally modeled via maps. So they're more naturally modeled by maps than differential equations. So for example, parts of economics and finance theory, population dynamics, and there's even, you know, there's more things all the time that we find out might be better modeled in terms of a discrete model, kind of discrete time rather than continuous time. Look at well, what's happening over the time scale of a week rather than, okay, is it continuously changing? It's just discrete. As we saw from the Lorenz attractor, and again, that's a, from a differential equation, the Lorenz map, remember that? That was that thing that he created where it looked at after the nth a peak in the Z variable, where's the nth plus oneth, and found that there was some interesting looking relationship. So this was a 1D map from a 3D ODE. It's not quite a uh, Poincaré section, it's something else that just ended up being useful. Mathematically, they provide simple examples of chaos because you can get chaos in a 1D map, whereas you need a 3D ordinary differential equation. And we're going to start with a map that does show chaos. The thing that's weird about maps is, right, things are kind of hopping. They don't have to move continuously. So if you've got a point X naught, it just sort of hops. Whoop. And they can, they can hop forward and backward and so on. So it takes some getting used to. We can't think of it. There's no, there's no vector field anymore. There's just a map. The map says to each point, it assigns where that point will go. So it's, it's definitely easiest to start in 1D. And then uh, it kind of follows from our discussion of that Lorenz map and the cobweb diagrams that we talked about last time. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna specialize to a particular map. Are there questions just generally about maps? Would you not see essentially like those orange lines? You only know where like the next step is popping up essentially. Well, it's all there. Like this point X2 would be F of F of X naught. Things are still deterministic, meaning that entire orbit, meaning X naught, being the initial condition and every forward iterate is still embedded. It can still be known. Yeah, but you wouldn't know, like, I guess the trajectory it took to get there. Or yeah, would that, is that that's right. 
it's meaning it, it doesn't even have meaning it didn't okay. really take a trajectory it's just it was here it was there it was there so yeah that's what's odd about it there's no kind of continuous flowing so that means you can get more interesting behavior in in lower dimensions like chaos in 1d which i think wasn't known until the map i'm about to talk about yeah that's a good question it's it's a change of mindset and sometimes you'll see figures and not know how to interpret it because you think in terms of continuous flowing that's why the book was set up to discuss first things that are more intuitive we think and think like in flowing so differential equations make sense of that maps uh, not so much they're 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 a strange beast 